CSA 823.2-5C, Slump of Concrete. This test method provides a procedure to determine the slump of plastic hydraulic cement concretes. The method is considered applicable for concretes having a coarse aggregate of up to 40 mm in size. If concrete containing a larger aggregate is to be used, the test shall be performed on the fraction passing the 40 mm sieve. Concretes having slumps greater than about 230 mm may not be adequately cohesive for the slump test to have significance. In such cases, caution should be exercised when interpreting the results. Consideration should also be given to supplementing the slump test with the slump flow test CSA 823.2-19C. This test method is not considered applicable to non-plastic or non-cohesive concrete, nor is it applicable to flowing or self-consolidating concrete. The apparatus used is a slump cone, steel tamping rod, and a measuring device. Prior to beginning the test, ensure that you have a rigid, flat surface free of vibration upon which to carry out the test. Obtain a representative sample per CSA 823.2-1C sampling of plaster and concrete. Transport the sample to the place where the tests are to be done and remix. Damping the equipment Hold the mold firmly in place. Do not allow it to move during the filling operation. The mold is filled in approximately three equal layers by volume. That would leave the first layer being approximately 70 millimeters high, the second layer 160 millimeters, with the final layer being slightly above the top of the comb. Using the tamping rod, rod each layer 25 times uniformly distributing the strokes across the entire surface area. In the case of the bottom layer, incline the rod slightly, making approximately half of the strokes near the perimeter, then progressing with vertical strokes in spirals towards the center. During the second and top layer, penetrate approximately 25 millimeters into the underlying layer. Prior to rotting the final layer, the concrete shall be heaped above the mold. If the rotting operation results in a subsidence of the concrete below the top edge, additional concrete shall be added to keep the concrete above the top of the mold at all times. After completion of rotting the top layer, strike off the surface with a screeding and rolling motion of the tamping rod. Any spilled concrete shall be removed from around the base. Ensure that the mold does not move during this step. The handles may be used to assist in keeping the mold firmly in place. Lift the mold in a smooth, vertical direction without any twisting or lateral motion. The lifting operation shall take approximately 5 seconds. Determine the slump of the concrete by measuring the difference between the height of the mold and the average height of the top surface of the concrete after subsidence. Record the slump to the nearest 5 mm. Specimens that break or slump laterally give incorrect results. In such cases, the test shall be repeated with an unused portion of the remaining sample or a new sample. Prior to conducting a retest, the concrete shall be remixed to ensure uniformity. If two consecutive tests show a falling away or shearing off of a portion of the concrete, the concrete probably lacks the necessary plasticity and cohesiveness for the slump test to be applicable. The test for slump shall be completed within 10 minutes of obtaining the sample, including transporting and remixing. The entire operation from start of filling to removal of the mold shall be completed without interruption within an elapsed time of 2 minutes. Concrete from the slump test can be reused for other concrete tests after proper remixing. This concludes the slump test.